News of the day. Uh, so here we are. It's a Tuesday, October 22nd. Uh, some, some stuff that's been going on enough that I'm saying, okay, we'll do some news of the day and we'll talk about it. And that's after I did my power rankings. I found out this morning the sun's at the exact right level that it wreaks havoc with the lighting in here. And I mean, the option would be to close everything off. So that, and, But then, then it's all the artificial light. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, so the NFL power rankings, the glare was there and I apologize for that. Uh, so let's get into some hockey. If people are like, what NFL power rankings? That's on the Entertainment Guy channel, which is my second channel. Uh, Lucas Pisa apparently is signing with the Anaheim Ducks. Now, according to rules, he has to clear waivers before he signs with the Ducks just to see if anybody else wants him. Uh, spoiler alert, no. Uh, nobody else is, is going to pick him up. And uh, Lucas Spiza does have to clear waivers, and then he will be a member of the Ducks, I assume, at league minimum for the rest of the year. I have to pause and check something on my phone. Uh, but yeah, uh, Spiza, number seven guy for Anaheim. Good depth pickup for them. He's been in Anaheim before. Uh, Griffin Reinhardt has signed with Cunlan Red Star. Remember when he was a top prospect and... Then it didn't quite work out with the Islanders, so theirs were like, we'll give up a first rounder, we'll take him. And then Vegas picked him up at the expansion draft, and by that point I was like, yeah, this guy's never going to make it. And Vegas fans were like, well, maybe. And then no, and uh, now he's he's going to the KHL. So best of luck to him to get things on track. Uh, it, he was one that we all thought looked pretty good in the draft, and then just didn't happen. Uh, Brian Dumoulin is out for tonight and tomorrow so because pittsburgh has a lot of forwards that are injured now we're going to start injuring the defensemen too uh other than wrapping pittsburgh penguin players in bubble wrap i'm not too sure what else we can do but uh yeah um it's it's some some trying times for pittsburgh the good news is when if everybody gets healthy then they should be a stronger team for it but uh, yeah going through a lot of injuries and losing dumoulin is is a major one um, anybody who's been tracking the Colorado Avalanche this year knows that not only are they off to a good start, but Nathan McKinnon is a pretty good player. He has points in every single game they've played this year. That's nine games so far this season. He has at least a point in every one. Uh, he scored in that game last night against St. Louis, so while they lose to St. Louis, and that's disappointing for Avalanche fans, McKinnon kept his hot streak going. And so he really has become the superstar player he was drafted to be years ago. Uh, David Krejci's on injured reserve for Boston. He's only played five games this year, had the one assist in the five games he's played. They've called up Bjork to fill in that roster spot until he's back and good to go. Uh, Boston's depth is an issue. Uh, I've pointed out in previews that they're, they're statistically not getting any uh, real point production from anybody outside of the top five scorers on this team. It is a problem, and if Krejci is going to be dealing with injuries and not playing particularly great when he's in the lineup in terms of producing points, uh, Boston's got some issues. Boston, while the record looks great right now, there are definitely some issues there. They are not uh, a juggernaut. They're not a fantastic team. There are some things to work out. These depth guys have to start scoring. Uh, Magnus Pajarvi, remember when he was a highly thought of prospect? He is signed with Locomotive in the KHL, so he and Reinhardt Two highly thought of prospects at the time they were drafted, both off to the KHL. Payarvi's contract is for two years with Locomotive, and uh, again, all the best to him. Um, Erickson is on waivers for Detroit. So, Pittsburgh or Vancouver fans who may just be listening and not watching when Erickson waivers. No, sorry guys, uh, Louis Erickson still with the Canucks. Uh, this is Jonathan Erickson with the Detroit Red Wings. He's on waivers. He's been injured to start the season. It's highly likely he's on waivers. I would think to go to the American Hockey League. Um, not much other, not not really another reason to put him on waivers unless they're going to demote him. And uh, they also uh, brought up Svechnikov today. So um, Detroit's still figuring some things out. And it's a long road ahead for Steve Eiserman, isn't it? Uh, Drew Doughty came out and said, hey, I hate everybody. No, he didn't. He basically said he has rivals on all teams. Now, there's two ways to look at this. Either he's saying, look, you know, we don't tell you guys about all our rivalries because we don't want to make a big deal of it. Or, eh, this Kachuk thing, he's not a big deal. He thinks he's, he's, not, he's not in my head at all. 
I I got players I hate everywhere. So I'm I'm leaning more towards Doughty telling the truth that there's players he doesn't like on every team, but I could see how people would take it the other way. And he might be saying this to try to diminish this huge thing between he and, and Matt Kachuk, which uh, seems to boil over in every game. So, yeah, um, he's probably tired of answering questions about it, and this is his way of making him making it go away. Um, Dale Howardchuk, I, I didn't know how to get this in. This this came out yesterday, and I remember thinking, gee, I, I don't know how I do this. So I'll just say this. Dale Howardchuk has been dealing with uh, stomach cancer. Uh, he's been going in for chemo every other week. So basically, you go in, you get chemo, and it just destroys you physically. And then for the next week, he's he's building up strength to go in for the next round. Uh, all the best to Dale Howardchuk. Uh, you know, it, it's a, a terrible thing. And again, I didn't know how to really get this in here, so I'll I'll put it in here. And and if if Dale sees this, all the best. There was a time where I never would have thought that an actual NHL player was watching or former NHL players. I now know through personal experience that's not the case. So when I see stuff like this, I always think, all right, how do you report this? And how does how does this work? So this is the best way I can think to do it, to put this into this video and say, you know, get well soon and, and fight the good fight. Uh, the last comment, the last um, note on the board is about last night's penalty shot. It was reported that the penalty shot was for Marner putting his hand on the puck, and that was on that was on the stat sheet as well. And and Sportsnet said that as well that that was officially what everybody believed was the reason. The penalty shot was for the hook before Nyquist gets off the shot, and the complaint was, well, Nyquist got off a shot, so that shouldn't be a penalty shot. The NHL has changed the way that they decide what is or isn't considered good for a penalty shot. If you're on a breakaway. And that breakaway is impeded in some manner, and you can't get off your best shot in that opportunity, you will get a penalty shot. It used to be if you got a shot off and it hit the net, no no penalty shot. And I remember numerous opportunities over the years where a guy would get a shot, and you'd be like, well, he got the shot, so it's not a penalty shot. That is no longer the case. If it's impeded and they felt that it was impeded by what Marner did, that... Um, then you get yourself a penalty shot in the in the process. So uh, there was some confusion afterwards uh, at the time, and I I could see you know I was like yeah Marner's got his hand on the puck and the crease can't do that. So uh, really there was two reasons to potentially give out a penalty shot in that in that situation, and they gave out the first one, which there really isn't any argument against. But again, I I know people get upset, and they definitely give out penalty shots much more liberally now than they used to, and. I think it adds to the excitement of the game. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And uh, this video is brought to you by Joseph Wonderlich or Wonderlish. One or the other. Because again, there are subscribers all over the world. So could be either or I butchered it. One or the other. But there you go. Uh, supporter on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for, for being supporters on Patreon. I've, I've changed up the levels on Patreon as well over the last couple of days. And uh, we're working on uh, making it so that each level builds on the one below it. And so that if you go up a level, you don't lose any of the, the benefits below. Which no, people never really did, but I never really explicitly had that in there. So working on, on getting any of the, the, the vagueness out of some of that. And, um pretty pretty happy with the way things are going on there as well and i was i tried three times yesterday to make a video just to post on the patreon and each time it got interrupted um i think twice due to kids and and once due to uh, a cat issue and i finally went i uh, forget it because after that many i was like nah uh so there you go uh, you guys are caught up in news of the day and other little tidbits from around the home uh thank you guys so much again for all your support and i will talk to you again soon